Okay, so this is an example file um, that someone sent in. Um, and this is rubber. It's that orange rubber. It doesn't look that way uh, in the preview, uh, but it's that standard orange laserable rubber uh, to make rubber stamps with. And this file was sent in uh, by a client that was having some trouble with it. So already at the very beginning, I see some things that may need to be addressed as far as settings and all that goes. Um, but I am going to run that one just exactly as it is. And um, I'm going to call that example number one. And let me center those up. Nope, not that part. Okay, so those are vectors. Uh, never mind, that's close enough. So then um, let's do an array. And we can get three on there. We can probably get six on there if we want to do a test, but we'll just do three. That should be sufficient. And I could have used variable text here, but I'll just change it manually. Let's see, get out of here. We'll make this two. We'll make this three. So we're going to leave this one original, um, just as it is. And on this one, we're going to give it a different layer. And this one, we'll give it a different layer. So this one I'm going to set up uh, of, to see if we have any settings in our library um, that'll do that. And there's rubber. That's four and a half millimeters though. This stuff is like 2.6 or 2.9 and that's just for cut. Uh, and I'm not worried about cutting right now. We're just testing some engraving things. So <coughs> I'm just gonna I'm gonna take a stab at it. Uh, these are the letter. These are the uh, numbers. So we'll leave those. And yeah, I think I'll just do a line on those. That's a little fast for a vector, even though it'll govern itself. And that's probably I don't know. I, I've heard this rubber takes a good amount of power, um, but just for a, a good baseline, I'm gonna try this, and we'll set that. Um, the remainder of them are going to be fills, and we're going to do that one at 600. Uh, maybe I've heard you're supposed to do it slower, so we'll do 500. Uh, and let's do 70 power. That line interval is way too big, so let's do 0 0.08. Um, these are really um, these Roman numbers, I guess, are uh, real square, but they're thick. They're fairly thick. I don't think we need a ramp. I'm going to do one without a ramp and one with a ramp, I think, so we can look at the difference. Uh, that may be the best way to do that. Um, I think one pass will be enough. And that looks like we all we need to do there, air assist low. Let me make sure that's the same actually on all of them. We need air assist low, air assist low, air assist low. Good. Um, so this next one, let's use the same settings as number two. I think five hundred and seventy with a point zero eight scan gap or line interval, and let's add a ramp. <coughs> And I don't know if, yeah, let me take a look. Now let's look at the preview. And this ramp stuff is a lot to process. So, um, there's that one. This is the original and you can see there is a ramp around it. Now I've got it shaded according to power right now. So you're actually gonna see gradations that are representative of the laser power. Uh, if I turn that off and you dig in a little bit closer, you can actually see what's going on here. Now, if you'll look closely, this is a solid line going this way and this way. So this is a raster, uh, but then it's cutting out around the edges. And I really don't think that that's necessary. 
So that's set to fill plus line, which means it's going to fill and then it's going to go around it with that line. Now that may negate or, or cause problems with uh, your ramp, depending on how you have that set up. So that's why I have my test pieces uh, just fill and not fill plus line because I don't think typically you want to do that uh, with, with rubber stamps. Um, Let's look at the preview again. I want to see if we can see a difference in the ramps between example number two and example number three. So, I let's shade according to power. This one does not have a ramp. So let's back out. And you'll notice that one looks a little fuzzy. Let's turn off shade according to power and it'll clean up. But if you go closer, you'll notice that that ramp is there. You can see around the outside. So if we shade according to power and uh, let's get in there a little bit more, it's going to just barely put a shoulder all the way around this, a nice soft shoulder. Um, on skinny letters and tall letters, that, that's good. So we'll just see what those three do. Um, I've, already got the, I've already got it focused. I'm going to update my overlay. Everything looks like it's placed in the same spot. I'm going to get back out. And I have no idea what's going to happen. So we're just going to run it. And I'm actually going to send it to the controller so that that entire file goes into the controller's memory uh, instead of streaming it. And then I want to make sure that I delete all my files in my files list or the ones that I don't need for sure. And I'm going to update the overlay. There we go. We get a little better view. I had a flare up at first. I didn't have my uh, air line connected to my compressor. So that's been rectified. So while it's doing this, um, let's go back and look at uh, the things that I saw with this first example. and let me put that first so here's here's that layer we've got a speed of 130 millimeters per second on a machine that's capable of a thousand millimeters per second and i do know that on the rubber they recommend you go slow uh, this seems to be incredibly slow uh, the k40s uh, were originally designed as rubber stamp lasers pretty much only that's why they didn't have a movable z-axis and that's also the concept behind the Mini 60, uh, I think originally. Um, I could be wrong there. However, um, you know, the K40s and all of those will do five or 600 millimeters per second. So I'm thinking, you know, three, 400 millimeters per second, um, maybe a little bit better. This is pretty slow. Um, also, the line interval is 0 0.02, which gives you a resolution of 1,270 lines per inch, which is 720p. This is damn near HD. Um, and when you're just trying to take off the material around the letters, um, you, there's no way you need to be anywhere near this precise. Um, this will literally take more time to do this one than it will to do the other two together. Uh, and it probably won't give you a very good result. Um, it looks like the ramp length is 0.2, uh, but it looks like it's on the inner edge, and I'm not sure exactly what that's going to look like uh, when it comes out. So, and then of course the second one, let's look at that one. I cranked the speed up to 500 millimeters per second, 70% power now. I believe this client has a um, Nova 24 60 watt machine um, and my machine is an 80 watt machine uh, so there's a little bit of difference here but I think it'll be you know close enough I might burn a little deeper but I think everything else should be uh, pretty similar
this first go around, we're probably not going to dial in the settings perfectly, uh, but this will give us a really good idea of what direction we need to go. And um, I'll send these files back to the client, and after all this is done, we'll look at the results. I'll probably look at it under the USB microscope, um, and then we'll discuss the results and what we need to do to get the output that is desired. So that's. Uh, my first foray into rubber stamps and uh, we'll see how it goes.